Give me your ears. And that usually means, well, I won't say what that means. Uh, just lend me your ears. Make sure that he understood what that means. So, uh, you know, Friday, I mentioned a point, and rather I asked a question. And the question was that, you know, in the Quran, and I'm going to go to the background as we come forward. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he swears by many things. And two of the things that he swears by is Fajr and Asr. And these are the only two times as far as Dhor, Maghrib, and Isha, he doesn't swear by them. He only swears by these two. One Fajr and one Asr. So the question is why? And what does this really mean? And when we look at Ramadan, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the verses in Surah Baqarah as far as related to Ramadan, Shahru Ramadan illadhi unzila fihi al-Quran. That this is the month of Ramadan in which the Quran was revealed. And it's very interesting, you know, so this is the month of the Quran. The association with the book is so significant that Allah subhanahu wa also in Surah Tawbah he refers to the disbelievers as najis, unclean. But because of their association with the book, even though they're not Muslims, Christians and Jews were allowed to eat their food. Of course, so long as it's halal. Whereas, you know, anyone else, because they're non-association with the book, then we're not allowed to eat their food. So here, when we talk about the Quran, so, you know, of course, we think of the Quran as a book. And in reality, the Quran is a conversation between Allah and His beloved, and then through Him to the rest of us. Every verse in the Quran is connected to Rasulullah directly or indirectly it points towards him one way or the other so even the verses about Firaun you know they're teaching us Allah SWT is teaching us that he did to Firaun what he did to Firaun because he disrespected his Kalim the one who spoke to him if we disrespect his Habib then what can we expect you know there's a big difference between Kalim and Habib one is the one that he spoke to, and the other one is his beloved. The in language, you, know, you have certain ways of saying things. So you have like metaphors and similes. So if I'm talking about someone who's brave and courageous, I don't have to say that, you know. He's brave and courageous like a lion. You know, if I simply say, he is a lion, everybody understood understands what that means. They don't think of something with claws and a tail and teeth and all this other stuff. They understand, oh, this is a, a, this is a metaphor for his, his courage and bravery. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also in the Quran, he swears by many things. But if you look at the way that he swears, everything again is connected to his beloved. Sometimes directly and sometimes indirectly. So directly, you know, we see examples of this where he says, La Amroka to Rasulullah. You know, he, that he, sw he says, I swear by your life, my beloved. Or other places where he says, uh, and he swears by himself, but he says, I, I swear by your Lord. Like, Whose Lord? The Lord of the Beloved. Yeah. And then there are places where he says, Wadduha. He swears by 
Adha, which is the time in the morning when the sun has come up. It's bright, but you still have the coolness of the morning. So what is this talking about? What's so significant there? It's an analogy to the beautiful face of Rasulullah Sallallahu That whoever looks upon his face is coolness. And yet you see everything clearly. Where Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi said, fear the sight of the moment because he sees with the nur of Allah. Even in what thing it was Zaytun. You know, we translate that as he's, Allah says, by the fig and the olive. But to understand what the fig and the olive are, you have to read the rest of the verses. And by Mount Sinai. And by this city of security. Which city? The city that Rasulullah is in. So what Tuhr is seen now, so obvious, oh, it's the place of Musa alayhi salam. So now we understand Teen and, and Zaytun. Teen is not simply the, 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 the fruit, but it's the place of the Teen, the place of the fig. Which is the place of who? The place of Ibrahim alayhi salam. The place of the olives, the, the prophets of Bani Israel, Jerusalem. So he's swearing by their place. So we have to keep understanding the connections here. Wal Fajr. By Fajr. Okay, we've got to get up for Fajr. But what's the connection? And then we see Walayal in Ashr. By the ten nights. The ten nights of what? Zilhaj. Was shafi wal wathar by the odd and, and or the, the even and the odd. And then it goes on, but then you start understanding, oh. Hajj, what does Hajj remind me of? You know, I start making tawaf and I look at the Kaaba and it reminds me of Ibrahim alayhi salam. But then I remember, oh, when Ibrahim alayhi salam and Ismail alayhi salam completed the the the, the uh, building of the Kaaba, what do what did they make? Who did they make? What who were they asking for? When they said, oh Allah send them up, send amongst them a messenger from amongst themselves. Who? Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know I do say between Safa and Marwa and I reminded of Bibi Hajra and her running, but why is she running? She's running for the love of her son. But who is her son? Her son is Ismail al Islam, who is a prophet, but not just any prophet. The prophet through who, whose lineage comes whom? Rasulullah. I go to Arafat. I think of Ibrahim al Islam. I don't think of anything. But then I remember oh, Jabal al Rahman. Arafat, meaning of what? To recognize. What, did they, what was recognized there? This is where Adam al Islam meets Hawa, his wife, when they are sent to the earth and 300 years he's making this dua, they all love, forgive me. And there's no response until he comes in Arafat. And he sees her, he recognizes her, but he recognizes something even greater than that. What he had forgotten when he made the dua, Rabbana Dalamna Amfusana, that there is, no, there is no acceptance of Tawbah except through the wasila of Rasulullah. That's why it's Jabal Rahmah. You know, if he simply made the dua, he'd been making the dua for 300 years, there was no response. He made the dua in Jannah, and he was thrown out. Allah Subhanahu said, get down. So if the dua was, was the reason for the acceptance itself, then he shouldn't have been sent to earth, because Tawbah wipes away everything before it. He should have simply been, we, you know, he would still be in Jannah, and none of us would be born. So now when I look at Wal Fajr, then I understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is swearing by the time that he sent his beloved to us. When was Rasulullah Sussam born? As Fajr was starting, as the day was coming, so now the night is going, which is the end of that 
والفجر وليال نشر والشفع والوتر والليل إذا يسر. As the night departs. Darkness goes. The light comes and the darkness leaves. So this is Fajr. This is easy. Now the question is Asr. Wal Asr. The next verse, the Allah Spanta swears by Asr. Not just any time, but the time of Asr. Inna al insana lafi khus. That verily. You know, without a doubt, mankind is in loss. Mankind is destroyed. How does this connect to us? What was the action? Or what kind of action destroys mankind? That Allah SWT says, That I will wipe away your deeds and you won't even realize it. Hmm? The disrespect of Rasulullah SAW. But what disrespect? What can be more disrespectful than killing his grandson? Than spilling his blood the blood of Rasulullah And when did this happen? Time of Asr. So that's why he says, Wal Asr. At this time, mankind has destroyed himself. But then he says, Illa ladina amanu wa amil salihat. Wa tawasaw bil haq. Wa tawasaw bil sab. And who was on haq? Other than Imam Hussein al Islam. And who showed sabr? Other than Imam Hussein al Islam. You know, this is where Allah SWT says, Wala tahsaban al ladina qutilu. Fi sabili la amwat, bala hiyam, wala tila. Wala tahulu la mayyuk tila fi sabili la. Wala nablu anna kum bishayim. Wala nablu anna kum bishayim. Min al khawf wal juwe. وَنَقْسِمْ مِنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنْفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ That truly we will test you with something of hunger of fear of hunger وَالْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوْءِ وَنَقْسِمْ مِنَ الْأَمْوَالِ You know Your wealth, your lives, and your offspring and then he says what? And glad tidings to those who are patient. As he says, So this is the significance of these times. And this is why these times stand out above all other times. The sending of his beloved, and the sacrifice of Imam Hussein al Islam in Karbala so that Islam reaches us for the protection of his grandfather's religion. Which is why Rasulullah said, Al Hussein o Minni wa ana min al Hussein. That Hussein is from me and I am from Hussein. Like we're today, we're here for the khatam, which, because of the limitation of language, is a misnomer. But that's how we say it. You know, that we're completion of the Quran, and the Quran is never complete. The Quran never ends, or rather, let me put it this way: not that it's not complete, it never ends. It's unlimited. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is unlimited and the Quran is Kalam Allah, it is His word. 
So as he is unlimited, his word is also unlimited. But then when we extend this on further, who is the walking, talking, living Quran other than Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Who is not only the walking, talking, living Quran, but who is its bayan? Who is the explanation to this Quran other than Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? And the meanings of the Quran are endless. And who is the meaning of the Quran other than Rasulullah? So what can we say about him? So again, this is the month of the Quran. So we need to make that connection with the Quran so that we can make a connection with Rasulullah. And without that connection, nothing else matters. You know, and the connection, you know, unfortunately these days people think, oh, you know, you grow your beard long and, and uh, you know, an extra two inches and, and, you know, you do this and you do that and you made the connection. The connection is from here. You know, these are expressions of the connection, but they don't, they aren't the reality of the connection. Because you can have the expressions without the reality. And those expressions don't matter unless the reality is there. And this is when we look at the attitude of the companions of Rasulullah we see that, we see that, the reality of those connections. So may Allah SWT allow us to connect to his book, to connect to his beloved, which is the only way to connect to himself, and to the family of the beloved and the companions of the beloved. So inshallah I'll end here. Uh, and, uh, we'll make a and then uh, make sure we can, uh, and uh, that are we or sell out first and then that are we children.